Okay, so today we're going to talk about linters in Go specifically. Uh, so first of all, uh, linters is like a static code analysis tool. So I want to talk about it uh, at first. And uh, what 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 is the static code analysis? This is kind of a process when we analyze the program. Uh, without uh, the execution of that actual program. And uh, we basically have like few phases of it. Uh, like we parse that program uh, to some like uh, representation that we then could like, uh, that we then could like analyze. Uh, like apply some checkers, some rules, and then like report the problems as uh, that our, our like an, an anal analysis tool is uh, like applied to. Uh, and uh, so actually linters, what, what does like linters have to do with this thing? As, as with like, this kind of dust removal tool, which is called linter, we have like the same thing uh, here that we kind of remove the dust, the smell if, I mean, if, if the dust actually smells and then like, uh, and then our code looks cleaner, at least at, at some extent. So it helps to kind of replace, uh, uh, not not really replace, but find find bugs and avoid it, fix it, find code complexity, uh, like high comp code complexity functions, uh, so that we can like lower it. Uh, and then like some formatting issues. For for example, if there is kind of uh, canonical policy uh, that is defined on the like on this organization level or if there is like a policy that is applied to go specifically uh, like at the whole uh, language level and then like fix security issues there is there are some linters that are uh, working in the area of finding that OWASP uh, issues in your code uh, and uh, like and many more like styling, uh, performance and and so on and so forth. So basically the word linter uh, actually originates uh, from a Unix utility uh, that is, uh, that was created like by, by Steve Johnson uh, in the Bell Lab Labs in 1978. Uh, looks like like a, a lot of cool things was produced in the Bell Labs at that time, where probably like GoLink also came from. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is. Uh, to, to sum up what is linters actually are is it, it is it is a tool which uh, the main purpose of which is to kind of minimize the cost of programming error and it 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 almost little literally for free because like you don't uh, once configured you don't really uh, need like to do anything more besides like annoying your developers that some issues should be fixed, uh, like enforces and by enforcing some policies and so on. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that is kind of a linter's overview. And let's now add a bit of a Go context especially in, in history of Go linters. So basically, 
uh, Go is a kind of a unique language in, in the way that uh, from the very beginning, from the initial creation uh, in the like pre-release versions, uh, Go uh, has uh, had uh, those tools like to uh, to create uh, that would like allow uh, the community to create linters easily. Which is like Go parser, Go ST, Go tokens, Go scanner, and Go printer. Uh, where we, about which we're gonna talk a bit later. Uh, but anyway, uh, also, uh, the Go was released with such tools like Go FMT to properly format the code, which also use uh, uses that like go parser and go printer packages uh, go that uh, to like statically analyze the code and find any suspicious con constructs also then like around like 2013 GoFix was released where which allowed actually to align the the code to the uh, to the changes in the newer Go APIs, and and finally the Go Lint, which uh, was released a bit later, uh, but still uh, it like it 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 helped help to maintain uh, the styling, which which is actually like. Uh, conforms the standards of of the effective goal and like uh, and covers most of the code review commands that are like defined by the uh, by the goal community what else and uh, go go imports uh, which is also really helpful tool to actually format your imports properly. And in, in the meantime, there was released like more than 50, 50 different third party linters which was released by the help of uh, those like libraries like GoParser and GoPrinter. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, which allowed the community to uh, actively contribute to the linters and to the co code, actually to, to make code cleaner in many ways. And uh, recently there was like Go analysis uh, package released, which, which is kind of a framework of how to build the linters, how to easily build them. So, which we are going to talk also a bit later. Okay, so this is kind of it about the history. Let's go further. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's, let's take a look uh, how the linters work previously before the uh, before the Go analysis package was released. Actually, uh, the, the, the very first phase is to like analyze your code, as I said earlier. Is, is, this is kind of uh, parsing your code into some like AST, which is like abstract syntax tree representation, where the code is tokenized and then you and by the help of like uh, parsing tools, and then by the help of Go IST package, you can like traverse th that syntax tree and uh, apply the rules which you want to like be applied. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the example of the simple. Uh, parts of the like 
of, of the just a single file. For example, the name is main.go. You do the simple read, then like by using the parser, uh, I, I should have to include the import there. This is like go for go parser actually. My bad. Uh, so we just parse it, uh, provide a file file set. We just initialize a new file set. File set is is a, like set of uh, tokens that will be populated uh, inside like that parse. Uh, so we basically provide the file name, data uh, from content from that file, and then we end up having like a AST, which is which is ready to use. And this is actually the trivial example, which which shows that by the help of those like go tools initially released, this is kind of easy to create your own linters in and use it then. Okay, so uh, then, uh, yeah, kind of have to show it. So this is kind of uh, AST, as you can see. Uh, and uh, for example, if you just take uh, this uh, little piece uh, and uh, like check what, what is the actual representation in the Go code, it will be kind of a binary expression with uh, like A, uh, with the operation, subtraction, and uh, uh, those like uh, within those variables A, variable A and B. Uh, this is how like those parsed file actually looks like. Okay, then now go a bit further. However, uh, this is kind of, uh, I mean, even though that uh, those tools are ready to use and, uh, uh, and actually you can just use it and create your own linters, uh, this is, uh, this still are kind of low level tools, which, uh, which requires to, to write a boilerplate code in there. So you kind of need to, to build your own linter. You kind of need to define the rules. I mean, that's obvious. Then like, uh, as you want to go through, like traverse your, AST, you have to define the visit func. This is actually a visitor interface which has a visit func uh, where you you're going to uh, to apply the define it rules, then like parse uh, the AST as I showed before, then like again the tree. Traverse AST uh, and uh, like within the traverse apply, try to apply within the visit fund uh, the definite rules. Like if, for example, again, we are, we are looking at that little piece. Uh, say that we uh, want to like to find that subtract operation. Uh, we want to find that those are variables A and B. Uh, their type is like integer and apply some check only to this little piece. We got to like, uh, while traversing the, the IST find that those are like needed nodes A and B, uh, type check them. Uh, because like, if you want check the type, you may find like different variables. Say if those like A and B would be of type like float or anything boolean. 
probably. Yeah, so, or like any other kind of type. And, uh, but we want just this one. We need to always type check it and then, up, and only then apply the rules. So this is kind of adds a bit of a boiler plate code. And also uh, it actually doesn't make it doesn't really make it possible to re reuse uh, the rules or checkers that probably other people uh, has written uh, or the community uh, because they might not have the same interface. There is kind of no, there was no the single interface, the single interface which would kind of uh, would be shared between the community uh, and then which could help to, to write like share, share li uh, linter checkers and so on. So uh, as you can see, there is like uh, three in, of uh, go wet exam example source code uh, where we have like a lot of rules defined uh, which are actually applied only to web because like this is, as I said, it, it didn't really show the uh, shared uh, single interface. And uh, also I gotta define like visit func there, which implements that I stay visitor. Then uh, I had to define like, uh, all, all those like checkers uh, and so on. So, yeah. So, in, like recently, uh, recently the Go developers have released like Go analysis package, which uh, have like uh, which which had uh, a goal to like resolve that uh, that potential. I mean, mm, not really a problem, but uh, like make the rules or checkers uh, shareable and uh, like incorporate it like much more is eas easier and so on. So uh, they have developed Go analysis, which is, they, they kind of define a single interface between the actual checker with which uh, uh, takes as a parameter like AST nodes and then produces a result as a, if the proper like condition were found uh, so uh, so that we can actually uh, like check check the part of code and, uh, and between the like uh, analysis driver program which actually is a, a kind of a runner of such checkers uh, which, which also uh, provided the possibility to make those checkers or analyzers. Uh, th there is actually a term checker uh, which uh, describes that uh, checker is a tool which does the analysis on the code and produce the like result based on it. So I, I might just like replace those uh, terms like analyzers, checkers, or rule rules or kind of that. So uh, it provided the possibility to uh, do the modular ana uh, analysis actually from create your, your, to create your analyzers in uh, like a generic way, 
uh, and uh, provided a poss possibility to actually reuse others uh, others ch uh, checkers that have like others built. Uh, there is no boiler plate of like passing and traversing the IST. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to like parse your files anymore. Uh, you don't need to write uh, write up those visit funks and so on. So this is kind of a, an example of such modular analyzer. You just have a struct where you gotta define a run function. The run function uh, takes as a parameter uh, pass, which has an access to the uh, AST. So when you want to apply some rules, you just uh, define inside the run function, uh, you define the actual rule and that's it. So as, as I showed there, there, there was like a lot of checkers and uh, then a lot of code in the web uh, tool which then transformed into this one. You just have like only main file. The content of main file is like only like that. You just, you have uh, basically in the Go analysis package, uh, you only have that um, two ways of running your checkers is like by using unit checkers, which allows you to provide any num number of uh, analyzers uh, for, uh, for the linter, or there is like a single checker if you want to just provide a single analyzer. And that's it, you, you just, you can reuse those analyzers uh, and uh, that's a bit simplified the uh, actually the writing of new linters. A lot of linters have moved to uh, that structure, uh, the wet especially, as you can see. Uh, also, I dig a bit the the Lancy Island, and it is also it is also done in the same kind of way, but we will talk about aggregators a bit later. So yeah, uh, now now that we have like at least a slight overview of how does it how did it work, how does it work now. So let's talk about Colinter classification. So basically, uh, it is we, we can classify it by the code smells. Uh, there are like uh, a number or like a, a group of different code smells that that we can divide them. Uh, the first one is code formatting. I just uh, go thumped. That's the probably the best example. Code complexity. Uh, there are a lot of linters. I wouldn't say a lot, but I mean like few linters that check code complexity. Style style guy. I mean, linters that, that are enforcing style guides and patterns, uh, bugs, unused code, performance, security, any kind of that. So let's take a look uh, a bit like deeper of on how to, uh, on which linters actually are there 
uh, in those groups. So the first one is a code for margin. Go FMT, go imports. I mean, go fund, probably I, I shouldn't explain. Go imports, probably too, just to format your imports. Uh, and in the end, uh, to find an unnecessary indentation. Also, I mean, those are useful linters to uh, make your code like readable uh, when you have like the same format uh, defined by the policy. This is really uh, simplifies reading by other people. This actually also includes uh, the style guides, but we'll talk about it also. Okay, code complexity uh, goes go law, fun land, make it red, native. Those are actually the tools <laughs> I would say, like probably in, in, in my team, guys didn't like the most because, like, uh, it, it, it often complains that you gotta split your function. This is like uh, the complexity. I mean, I mean there are like more uh, complexity in nested ifs than it is allowed and so on. So yeah, naked, naked red is, uh, you, you, you can define the, uh, the amount of like, of naked returns, uh, which is uh, which is correlates to the function length, and uh, by the calculate calculation between like uh, actually function length and those returns, it will also fail if it uh, goes beyond the defined number of them. Fun length. This is like kind of self explained. Just check the function lens. Uh, okay, so the next one are like styles and patterns. So basically, go in, as I said, uh, check, checks the and enforces the styles. Uh, it is probably, I mean, uh, just using the uh, the goal lint, it is probably not not a good way of like uh, enforcing like policies because it 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 doesn't provide a possibility to e exclude something. Of course, like each linter like might have some false positives and false negatives. So uh, it is like good to uh, good to make sure that you don't enforce anything like more than required than you really want to. Okay, back to <laughs> our linters. Uh, go simple. Uh, just reports where, where you can simplify your structure. Uh, basically, go found minus s uh, all also do kind of the same, and it, it also by the help of go parser and go printer actually provides you the sim sim simplest uh, structure of your code. So this is kind of good to good to use. Uh, revived linter is. Uh, kind of the same as Golint. Uh, it it has stricter policies. Uh, it it also runs faster, so probably seem to worse to consider. And uh, LLL is just a line length. Okay, so the next one is bugs. 
Uh, so which box we can have like that can be found uh, in the, uh, by the, the linters actually. So this is, this can be something like suspicious constructs uh, like probably printfs that does not have enough arguments uh, to conform the format string like self like govet actually does uh, also it, it does check uh, that uh, for example if you pass the uh, in json on marshall you pass the non-pointer struct it also will report that also, uh, what about sa safe SQL? Uh, safe SQL reports uh, actually the SQL injections. Uh, if you're using the libraries, uh, this is kind of hard to cure, but still like writing plain SQL queries, it, it can happen. Uh, error check, which uh, actually reports that you you forgot or didn't have uh, some checks uh, for errors or they are like committed. That actually, from my experience, that happens quite often when people just like forgot to check it uh, and. This is quite useful too. Body clause uh, also checks like whether HTTP body is closed uh, so that we can re reuse the TCP connection. Uh, also like GoSec looks for security issues, which can be not obvious. This is also really, really useful. Uh, okay, so then there is unused code, uh, which is quite, I mean, obvious. That code, that is just a dead code. Uh, unparam and unused reports like un unused structs, uh, unused actually code on param is for unused param in functions and the uh, struct check is actually for if there, there are like global variables or constructs that are also unused the next category is performance it it also can be not not that obvious when when you do like code review, for example. Uh, MLINE reports that uh, if there is a go go struct that uh, that actually uh, could uh, could could take less memory if uh, their field, fields were sorted. Like for example, if we have uh, like string field, then integer field, and then again string, it is better to have like both strings first or second, I mean like grouped together and then like, so actually group your fields by the types. Okay, copy fighter uh, also uh, also is a really useful linter when it comes to uh, when it comes to large structs that is actually passed by value. It it will report it that it would be better to uh, pass it by pointer. Of course, the, there might be. Uh, there might be like 
some uh, some ways where like you don't really want to have those like pointers but that's that is actually up on, on, uh, up to discussion on the code review okay and trialog uh, reports and the uh, slice declaration which potentially could be preallocated before the use okay uh, so and uh, this is uh, only a small piece of the linters I, I showed that we actually use on our project but uh, there are like lo lots more as I said like 50 plus linters uh, which I mean each of which can be useful in the like specific situations so how do we really use it? I mean, of course we can like uh, do uh, like invoke those, all those linters one by one, uh, but that's not really, it, it will take a lot of time. And then uh, you have to write like a big piece of uh, invocation code uh, to and i mean to really automate it easier there were like uh, linter aggregators created so uh, let's go further to the aggregators uh, linter aggregators actually uh, aggregate the linters execute them uh, sequentially or if i'm not mistaken there is a possibility to execute it par in parallel there are like few of them uh, which like the only uh, which of uh, we actually use uh, the go metal inter is not the one it is uh, already deprecated, and uh, if to compare to the Galaxy Island, it is slower and uh, had like uh, not that much of a linters. And basically, I, I tried it recently. There is and no way to use it. There are bugs in it, which will never be fixed as it is deprecated. So Galaxy Island. This one uh, we actually use, and I would recommend to use because, like, it is uh, uh, as far as I know, it is the most uh, I would say accepted by the community, which uh, actively uh, actively uh, maintains and uh, has some features like caching which uh, provides a way to uh, actually cache the uh, the results and then like run the second execution faster uh, for example if you want to to like incorporate some pre-commit hooks based on such linters. It also have uh, like fast. It also have like kind of a fast mode that invokes only like linters which runs fast. Kind of it. And uh, the very last one is a lint, which is actually. Uh, unit test driven so that you can use if, if you want to uh, check your code in that way uh, you gotta write a unit test and then like 
invoke the lint uh, for it. I, I personally, I don't find it quite useful as like unit tests is a bit different story. However, it does exist actually. So yeah, so this is kind of uh, examples of invocation of the Lansky lint and go metal inter. And uh, this is already useful. It, it, it shows, I mean, it aggregates the linters, uh, which we, I, I had to mention probably previ previously that uh, there is, uh, of course, there is a configuration where you can define which linters you want to enable, which to disable and so on. So uh, it, it, we can run actually uh, those uh, linters, check their results and basically uh, fix it and merge the code. This is already quite useful, but there is also uh, like, we can like improve that further probably. So currently we don't need to uh, to like run the linters one by one already, but we can improve it further to help the developers, uh, I would say, <laughs> to not, to annoy them too much, probably, and uh, incorporate multi-language platforms in our automation. Uh, also, think about a situation where like uh, there are like more than just one language uh, in, in your project. There might be like UI, which is written in some JavaScript framework. There might be some other projects uh, that, that are written in different languages. It, it happens quite often. And uh, by having like, uh, by having a need to incorporate uh, actually linters for each of the language, it will, it will take some time. But when, when it comes to multi-language platforms, it allows us to, uh, to do everything like at the, uh, in a single platform. Of course, there is a need of like, we gotta need to configure it properly for each language. But you you end up having uh, uh, like unified way to uh, check your reports, uh, actually code quality reports. It also might have uh, might include code coverage reports and so on. So this is kind of a single way of. Uh, inspecting your application. Uh, the, there are like a, a number of uh, such multi-language platforms which actually support the, the, which actually support the Go language. Uh, from those are SonarCube, CodeSync, and Cider. And, uh, um, I'm going to talk today about SonarCube more as like we use it. There are like a lot of cool features in it. <sighs> and uh, what else? <laughs> Probably because I, I configured it so I can show how it works. Okay, so this is kind of a uh, basically uh, a report that Sonar shows uh, where you can see that it 
uh, provides a metric for code coverage, for code smells. Uh, it is separated like code smells and bugs and vulnerabilities and duplications at the end. Uh, also, another cool feature of such multi-platforms is that they can provide a code quality report directly into your pull request so that everyone that actually uh, will look at the, at the pull request uh, will, will, I mean, can understand whether, whether there are any code smells, uh, which code coverage be, will be after the merge and so on. And another cool feature is that it actually provides a command uh, to, the, to the actual code. And this is really cool because like you, if it comes to this report, of course, uh, you can just look at it, find the needed line, check it, then fix and resubmit. But, but there it, it is much easier because it provides a visual representation and also like provides an explanation why, uh, I mean, why do we need to fix it or like some kind of a description of a code smile. And also it, is, it provides a way to just to review it, to hop on the sonar coupe uh, to like check more details about it. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, uh, I just want to describe a, a bit how actually Sonar Cube works. Uh, it, it does have uh, the, the layer like unified component, which called SLANG. SLANG is a kind of a framework uh, that actually uh, incorporates the language agnostic uh, AST, uh, where uh, specifically in the Go uh, case, they also use uh, the Go parser to parse uh, the Go code into like language uh, specific AST, and then they have for each language, they have those converters uh, where they convert the language specific AST to the language agnostic AST uh, to which they like apply their rules. So the SLANG is a framework that provides the toolkit for that. Uh, also, Sonarco as, as a platform, it contains of two components, like a scanner and a server, actually. Uh, scanner basically just scans your code, uh, looks for code smells, look, uh, and then uh, gather that uh, a coverage report called smiles you you can you can uh, also use like yeah uh, you can also use uh, like different uh, linter aggregators uh, reports of which you can pass to sonar scanner which then will be translated um, to the uh, Sonar server and then showed on the report. So yeah, this is kind of about the 
sonar coop and uh, how do we i mean let's let's put everything together so that we can uh, so that we can automate it uh, like add a, uh, add a sonar i mean have a sonar coop uh, server sonar scanner uh, some GitLab CI pipeline and let's actually find out how 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 it, it, it configures and how it works so uh, as a prerequisite we gotta have like a configured sonar server with sonar go plugin installed uh, currently I, I did the I did the Sonar server configuration on the weekends. It the Sonar Go plugin uh, comes by default within the installation. So, so this is basically you just install the Sonar server. Uh, there are lots of uh, of Docker image official Docker images for that. So you you, you can just download it from. Uh, Docker Hub and just use uh, the installation is basically ready. You just uh, you just do a Docker run and it is finished. Then uh, you gotta have like some other project configured with GitLab user token. Uh, I'm gonna show it a bit later. Uh, also. You have to have a GitLab runner to execute Sonar Scanner. Uh, if you are using uh, Docker uh, as an executor for GitLab runner, you can just uh, also use a Sonar Scanner image. The only problem that uh, there is that you have to install the Go uh, on that image so that the scanner will scan the Go source properly. Uh, the next one is to uh, have a GitLab project actually configured with uh, additional variables for like, uh, like, like Sonar user token. Uh, which actually will be used to access the Sonar server and to provide the results that is generated by uh, by the Sonar scanner. Obviously, uh, configured execution target to run the Sonar scanner. Uh, have code coverage and Golang CI lint targets. Uh, executed prior to Sonar. This is uh, this is required so that when the Sonar scanner will get execute, executed and when we pass, uh, so that we can like pass the reports from the Lens Island and code coverage uh, to the Sonar scanner so that we can then, so that the Sonar scanner actually can pass it to the server. Uh, yeah, I've talked about the Docker image already. So now URL. Uh, yeah, those are like additional variables that you you're gonna incorporate into your GitLab project. And uh, yeah, so that is kind of it. This uh, having though everything configured, it it, it just works sometimes sometimes it fails but that's a different story uh okay so uh so uh, this is uh how the docker image uh for GitLab runner uh looks like uh we have like uh, sonar I actually reused Sonar Scanner CLI. This is like official 
uh, Docker image from Sonar source. Uh, also installed a Go version. I mean, not Go 15, but we'll do it later. Um, okay. Uh, then, yeah. Then edit the uh, go into the path variable. That's it. Uh, this is how like the GitLab CI YAML looks like. Uh, we have a Sonar execution target uh, where we actually provide a lot of variables uh, to uh, to Sonar scanner at the fir at first, uh, so that it can properly uh, scan the code and then like generate a report which will be shown on the sonar server and then like by the sonar server will be translated or I mean will be sent to the back to the mesh request so that we can see those comments. We do like exclude unnecessary stuff that we might potentially have. Uh, the pull request section is uh, to make Sonar understand that this is another, like this is evaluation of a pull request, that there is a need to add those comments uh, and to add that like report to, to the merge request. Uh, also, uh, yeah, this is kind of uh, where we provide Galatia Lint report. How do we provide it actually? And then like here, there is like coverage report that we also have to provide and some other configuration that uh, actually is required to properly show the comments such as like unique issues per in line which just will generate another command another inline command per, per issue um, okay so yeah there is kind of um, I would say things that still I fight per personally I fight with because like um, Sonar provides uh, provides a way to incorporate like go wet, go link, go metal link, or go SI link reports. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not I won't be showing it today because I, this is kind of still a thing that I am working on, which like didn't uh, didn't work still on my uh, environment. And uh, uh, if to talk about common problems, uh, the only thing that I uh, that I faced this was a. Uh, shallow clone uh, which actually um, didn't allow to uh, provide the commands uh, from the sonar server uh, sonar actually didn't realize that there is a new code populated so but this is like can be uh, easily uh, we can overcome it by just setting uh, by just setting like git depths to zero and then it works. Okay, so this is kind of fit about the uh, sonar theory probably uh, what I wanted to show you. And uh, let's uh, go to the actual demonstration, how it works. So yeah, I have I've configured a 
a test project where I have like the CI YAML. I'll use my custom image to have like progress on our configured. Then uh, I have uh, cache uh, to maintain uh, code coverage to my sonar uh, scan phase. Uh, and I have basically two phases. Uh, have sonar scanner to run in the mesh request and to, to run in the master so that we don't pass like magic request related properties. Uh, this is uh, about the configuration uh, of the uh, of the actually the uh, website pipeline. Uh, the my custom image I showed it like simple go installation with the Sonar Scanner CLI. I actually tried once to uh, use some different, I mean, to install the Sonar separately, but no luck. The, I, I don't recommend doing it. <laughs> there are quite uh, some difficulties in doing that. So this is just to use like their official. And uh, I have also the sonar group configured where we actually have uh, that uh, past project uh, analyzed a few times. Uh, I, as you can see, I don't have any code smells. My code coverage is perfect and all good. Uh, what I wanted to show you also is like how do we uh, i mean from the sonar code perspective uh, how do we configure rules or i mean which rules are there probably so there are like rule section there are those languages define it which for which we can run the sonar check there are go rules it can be uh, changed uh, anytime, like extended, and so on. So there are a number of rules. Then how do we apply it? We define the quality profile. Let's let's find the Go project. Okay, so there is like only built-in. I I didn't define anything. This is just a fresh installation. So we just have like sonar built in with like this number of rules. I mean, which everything that is, that is uh, actually uh, there from the very beginning. Okay, we, now we have like quality profile, then how, how do you apply that quality profile to, act, to your actual code? Uh, you have to define it there. There are quality gates. Uh, the quality gates allow you to define how, I mean, how do you, how, uh, in which circumstances you, you're gonna fail uh, your pipeline uh, based on the analyzed code. So uh, there is like built-in which defines uh, like those metrics to be like a code coverage more than 80%, uh, less than 80% will fail and so on. Uh, I defined another one. There is like, you can easily add conditions, there are lots of metrics based on which uh, you can fail the pipeline. You can also define like uh, specific code smells, metrics, uh, and so on. Uh, so for, for my test project, uh, I just define it a single 
uh, a single rule just as an example that I want to have uh, uh, zero code smells in the new code. Uh, okay, so now that we have like a simple application with no code smells, let's uh, let's add like any uh, any code smell there, like something like that. Uh, basically, in in the very, uh, I mean, in the uh, very beginning set of rules that comes from the uh, from the fresh installation, we have those to do and fix me as a code smile. So I'm just gonna show you how how it will work. Uh, so I just not really not really what I wanted to do because I committed to master, and that is not a uh, that is not actually a pull request. So let's add another one, and and create like. Create a branch, start a new match request for that. So another code smell will be will be checked in as a new code. We added it, and uh, there is like sci pipeline executed already. The first one is test. Uh, we we didn't change any like anything in the code so the test will still have like 100 percent and then and then <laughs> and then it just gets stuck Let's let's hope. Oh yeah, it, 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 it is running now. Finally. Okay, so let's wait a few, a couple of seconds, and I'll I'll show you how it is getting executed. The sonar scan uh, target is actually uh, invokes uh, that using that Docker image, we invoke the sonar scanner with those properties. It actually uh, uh, analyzes the code and then uh, produces the result to the sonar server. So once it is finished on our pull request. We should see. We should see it there. Okay, uh, we can see. I, I, I submitted the the first. Uh, I submitted a merge request, but uh, no, no. I mean, I, the first one uh, commit that I did was without a manage request, just a plain commit to master. So uh, it already shows that there are two code smells, like first one to do and fix me. And once it finishes, we should see that, because currently there are, there is no that branch that, and that pull request that we actually created. Yeah, it takes some time. Uh, and then we, sh we will see that like here that our, uh, like the number of our code smiles that we have like failed the quality game that I said that it should be lower than zero. And then, 
And then our pull request will be will be incorporated. I mean, will be decorated with a with the actual code quality analysis. But so it actually created them the analysis uh, command. However. It put zero new code smells because you already have that at master. Yeah, but I created another one. Well, it's probably considered as one. No, I don't think so because I, I tried it already. Okay. Well, it, <laughs> it happens sometimes. Uh, so um, what, I, what can I show? Let's try. Uh, let's try to actually clear it probably. Well, it, it will take a lot of time. Uh, let's try, uh, let me show you like another merge request that I created previously because this is kind of unfortunate. Uh, okay, so and the thing is when I actually, oh yeah, so uh, another pull request that I did it was also with those code smiles. Uh, I have like code with just like also to do fix me and uh, it reported me that I, I have that code smell. It also reported back that I, I do have like such code smell in the report. It also reported that uh, I have such code smell like directly in the code by adding the inline command. And you can easily go the views on our code and check it there for like more details. Well, this is it. Another cool feature I also didn't edit, didn't have time to edit there is that uh, Sonarco provides uh, provides a way just to add uh, those like icons. Uh, to decorate your project uh, with the quality gates status uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, actually number of code smells and so on. So yeah, this is kind of sim simplifies, uh, a, I would say, development where you can easily, when you can easily like go to your manager request, review uh, the commands that, that are added, uh, automatically fix them and like you just don't break your production. That's kind of it for today. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I do. What about this uh, custom image? So, what it contain? Maybe I missed this. Uh, for Sonar, with Sonar, yeah, for Go. Yeah, so it, it just mm -hmm. like plain uh, like Sonar scanner contains like their Sonar CLI tool with Java installed, and there I just uh, download the Go. Okay, and why certain version? Why 13? Mm -hmm. um, there is no explanation to that. Okay. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> so, I mean, you can use like any, uh, as far as I know, you can use uh, .15 and I mean, the language that you, uh, the version 
that you use on uh, on your application. That's it. Anything? Anyone else? I believe everyone <laughs> needs their own eating or playing this on our group by himself. I want to add one more thing that like that sonar scoop um, visualization for projects like stakeholders and managers really like it to have uh, visibility of code for quality on the, on the project. So uh, that dashboard that is showing like no code smells, no vulnerabilities, great coverage and so on and history of, of that coverage like stakeholders like to see such dashboards of the project yeah, and yeah. sonar could also work with like web projects javascript and so on any other languages so we can keep track of code quality for all projects in one place yeah and, and just make everyone happy except developers who need to fix code smells <laughs> Yeah, but you gotta fix it either way uh, after like 